a Bible at the beach. Today we'll be in Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Let's get right into it. Every time I come to the Bible, I always say, now, Lord, give me the eyes to see what you need me to see today. Give me the ears to hear what you'd like me to hear and give me the heart and the courage to change and be fluid in my life and my thinking so that I can line up to what you're you're saying to me so I can make those adjustments in my life today. <clears throat> in that spirit, let's get into this very exciting new book of the Bible. Paul starts out, he says, from Paul and Timothy, both of us servants of Jesus, the anointed one. So Paul's writing this letter from prison. He's, um, this is, might represent what was one of his low points of ministry, uh, being incarcerated. And yet, it's one of his most profoundly joyful letters uh, that he has penned. So we see the dynamic between circumstances and joy, and they almost have zero correlation in life. You can see people that have everything and aren't joyful, and you can see people that have nothing, i.e. being incarcerated, being in prison, yet they're totally joyful. You see, it's an inside job. Joy, gratefulness, thankfulness, your attitude in life, <clears throat> it's an inside job. It has nothing to do with your circumstances, your surroundings, what you have, what you don't have. I get up every day, I have a thing in my notes, my journal called Life's Scoreboard and Gratitude, and every day I say, Lord, thank you that I ended up with a beautiful wife and family, all of our kids know God, God, thank you. Lord, thank you that I ended up in my favorite town, owning a home, getting to surf my favorite waves. God, thank you. God, thank you that I ended up with the most loyal friends uh, in life. Uh, I'm loyal to them and they're loyal to me. God, thank you. God, thank you that you helped me take my education to completion. I have a doctor, I have a platform to teach. God, thank you. And God, <clears throat> Thank you that I get to pastor people, I get to preach and teach your word, I get to plant churches, and I get to provide water for people. God, thank you. Every day, I start out uh, with that gratitude and that thankfulness before I really leave my room, leave my home, or, or get along with my day, and it changes everything. It changes everything. <clears throat> and so you see that your attitude and your gratefulness is what determines your joy not your circumstances and not your surroundings. I'm here in the hills directly behind where I live here in San Clemente. It is such a beautiful place to live, but I know this area well enough to know after living here for seven years uh, with my family that the outside settings don't match the inside settings. There's a lot of people live here aren't any happier than anyone you'd find in the most destitute part of the world. Because again, happiness, joy, and peace is an inside job. It's the Bible talks about. Jesus says, there's going to be a gift of living water that can bubble up inside of your soul. It changes how you think, changes your perspective, changes your paradigm, changes how you relate to the world, builds your gratitude, builds your gratefulness, builds your thanksgiving, and um, that changes everything. It's Jesus. It's the living water. This is what Paul had. <clears throat> he also was developing a younger leader. All wise leaders always develop younger leaders every single time. This is what Paul's trying to teach us in both how he strategically did mission, how he strategically raised other people up. So Paul is including Timothy <clears throat> in this writing. Uh, and he says to all the devoted followers in Philippi, including your pastors, and to all the servant leaders of the church. So um, Paul makes it really clear what his audience is. He says, May the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God, our wonderful Father and Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. So again, we see Paul in his circumstances, incarceration in prison, talking about a peace, a supernatural peace. You see, a lot of times people pray for their circumstances to change rarely do you think people pray for their perspective to change. You know, you really start getting mature in your life and your relationship with God when you quit asking for your circumstances to change and you start praying for your perspective to change. That is what a mature follower of Jesus does. 
They say, Lord, give me your eyes. The way God sees things is so much different from the way that we see it. He sees the entirety of your life from the beginning to the end because he has the benefit of being outside of time and space. And he can see all the little pivot points uh, of our life and he just sees things differently. And so we always wanna say, God, help me to see life and seasons and chapters with your view, not with my view. I have a finite, limited scope. God has an eternal scope we should try to align with. <clears throat> he says in verse three and four, my prayers, my prayers for you are full of praise to God. I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and the enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began his gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus. You know, God has a totally different plan for our life than, out, than we do. We gravitate towards comfort and accomplishments. <laughs> God <clears throat> often doesn't care about our comfort and our accomplishments. He has a totally different perspective. He is rejoicing every time we make a decision to be a little bit more like Jesus. That's when God says, there's my kid, making godly choices, <clears throat> leaning into godly wisdom, going after godly action. And so that's what it means to be mature <clears throat> to the unveiling of Jesus Christ, aligning with his view for us. He says, it's no wonder. I pray in verse seven with such confidence, since you have a permanent place in my heart, you've remained partners with me in the wonderful grace of God, even though I'm here in chains for standing up to the truth of the gospel. Now you'll find your commitment to Jesus lands you in different spaces and places. Paul took the mountaintops with the prison basement in same viewpoint. Life's full of mountain, mountain tops and peaks. It's also full of valleys and difficulties. And it's interesting that Paul would write my favorite book, Philippians in the New Testament, from the hardest of circumstances. He's trying to communicate something to hear. And it's, it has nothing to do with that. <clears throat> Again, it's an inside job. God, give me peace, give me love. Give me life that flows in me and through me and out of me. Then verse nine, he says, I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure, <clears throat> bringing you to the rich revelation of spiritual insight in all things. Spiritual insight in all things, yeah. Yeah, you can learn to see life through a spiritual lens where all of life becomes spiritual. When you start out baby Christian, you think, your spiritual life is like these little few activities that you do. No, 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 no. All of life is spiritual. Everything's interconnected. And the more we grow with Jesus, the more we learn to trust when God's speaking to us through a scripture, through wisdom, through circumstance, through prayer, through the energy that you interact with with <clears throat> other people all the time. You really learn how to do amazing things things um, as you trust God more. And then in verse 10, this will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure and without offense until the unveiling of Christ. And you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness that are found in Jesus, the anointed one, bringing great praise and glory <clears throat> to God. Following Jesus is excellent. Becoming pure is excellent. Living without offense is excellent and you will be filled completely with the fruit of righteousness that are found in Jesus. All the best fruit in our life flows out of a sincere devotion to the person and teachings of Jesus Christ. Man, thank you so much for tuning in Bible on the Beach today. We've, uh, for those of you who follow from the beginning, man, we've done the book of Matthew, we've done the book of Acts, uh, we've done uh, a bunch of Genesis, almost all of Genesis. Uh, we've done Ephesians, now we're doing Philippians. We've done 175 episodes now. I'm so thankful for those of you who are joining us in this daily dose of encouragement called Bible at the Beach. Uh, until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day. 
Stay strong. In Jesus' name.